Praise the Lord. Happy Easter, everyone. He has risen, amen. Jim Jones and Mary Lou. Let's pray for them. Robert Alley, Sandra Wise, and Amy Adams. She's here. And we want to continue to get the first. Okay. 
Hey, we got we're gonna be Moses and part with the Red Sea. <laughs> My wife wants it to shut down so we can get more seats. If this section over here, if everybody will move all the way to the left, don't leave any empty seats. In this section, move all the way to the left. Leave your seats here so people can sit down this side. Move to your left. This side, everybody move down to the left. That way we can give everybody a place to seat and it'll be easy. Oh, sorry. You guys go that way, you guys go that way. I told you to look at the letters in your hand. Thank you for your help and faith. If you haven't eaten this morning, any good you can laugh and have fun. Amen. Before we pray for our needs, uh, little did we know we'd get 10 inches of rain this week. We got flooded up here real bad. So after church, we're going to try to move vehicles and everything to have our Easter egg hunt because that's very important to our children. Amen. Amen. Lane was already clapping up here on the front. Uh, so bear with us. It, it's just a, a situation that we could not help. Now, if you don't mind your kids getting dirty and swimming in that beautiful Easter dress, <laughs> I see these mama's heads going, uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. So then bear with us, Brother Chris, and then we'll be directing that after service. Amen. If you have a need that you need Jesus Christ to touch to be in your life, lift your hands this morning in faith. Now, all things come through faith, amen? amen? If we have faith, all things are possible. So let's go to the Lord together this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we approach your throne so thankful for your love and mercy. We ask you, God, to reach down and to meet every need of every individual in this house. The hand that was lifted lifts in faith, knowing that you're able to accomplish and to do everything for us. So we cast all our cares on you this morning because we know you are the great I am. We're thankful, God, today that not only you died, but you rose again for us. And God, give us a way of victory and a way to eternal life. But now, God, we ask you, God, for the way that was placed upon your back for our healing. We ask you to meet the needs of your people. That shed blood is powerful, and we realize that just one drop of your blood changes lives. Right now, God, we accept, God, healing. We accept every miracle that we need in our life. And we ask these favors in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if you'll come forward and go up. Our gentlemen up there, love you. God bless you. Every one of my friends there, I'll see you all tomorrow at breakfast. Amen, guys. And all you up there in the nosebleed section, I love you. Amen. But pay attention. I can watch you more than I can these. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. Tell me, go forth in Jesus' name.
God. There's nothing better. Um, we're about to take communion, and we're going to invite you to sing a worship song with us. You don't have to stand up because we want you to take this time to just get your mind on God and um, have this time of reflection, you know, because the Word of God says that we should not take the Lord's Supper unworthily. So this is your time to be able to check your heart and see if there's anything that you need to get right with God. And let's just get our hearts and minds on our Savior. Amen. And please sing along with us. Oh! 
1 Corinthians chapter 11. Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And I ask you to go ahead and take the wafer if you would. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Hey, and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He said, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Would you just worship him now for the sacrifice he made for you? Savior, we praise you today. We worship you and honor you in all that you have done for us. The sacrifice that you make for our salvation. For giving yourself to die on a tree that we can have life and have it more abundant. Thank you for the wafer. Thank you for the bread, the body. Thank you for the cup that signifies your blood. Thank you for sacrificing your life that I can have life and have it more abundantly. We worship you this morning and we just want to echo how great you are, that you are our Savior. You are our Lord. You are our soon coming King. We worship you this morning. Your sacrifice does not go unnoticed. Because as long as there's breath in our body, we'll proclaim the greatness of Jesus Christ. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we all say, Amen.
Amen. And I believe that if if this crowd that's here this morning can go forth out into this world and begin to witness and begin to bring souls in, we're going to see what God can do. Amen. Amen.
comes to Jesus Christ is talking about the blood. And it seems like talking about the blood of Jesus Christ has become um, something that is um, frowned upon because it's gory. Um, and we don't want to scare anybody away from the church. But it is the blood. It is the blood that is powerful. Amen? It was the blood that ran from his body that as it fell to the ground that brought our salvation. So this morning, to me, it's not something gory. To me, it's something to rejoice about. So thankful that I had a Savior willing to shed his blood for you and for me. Amen.
Yeah, it's for 
Did you see a man over there? Go ahead. That's my man, amen. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, we're going to do something a little different on the Easter message this morning. Turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Do you hear the title? He is risen. But there's a truth of the resurrection. Can I brag on my God just for a few moments? There's no God in the world that can compare to our God. He's the only one that has evidence that he rose from the dead. So there's no salvation in any other God but the Lord Jesus Christ. Only by him can you be saved this morning. Why? Because he arose from the dead and conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen? Amen. So today, as a body of believers that's gathered here, we have the right to brag on our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. Amen? He is risen this morning. Now I see that you're not going to be real energetic, so I'm going to have to really get at it. <laughs> Notice with me chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, beginning at verse 12. To everyone here this morning, uh, we have an Easter service next Sunday too. <laughs> Sunday after that, Sunday after that, amen. Good to see you in the full house this morning, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, just a couple of things before we get into the message. Be patient while we get ready for the egg hunt after. And also, our volunteer fire department is having a fish fry. They're having a fish fry today. So if you don't want to cook, go by there, buy some fish, take it home. I know they'll appreciate it. You don't think much about your fire department until you need them. Amen. 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 Guarantee you. When a fire engine goes by, you take notice of that. Amen? amen. Some of you did the ice cream truck too. Amen. So I just <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. Verse 12. Now it's Christ preached that he has been raised from the dead. But how do some among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? Now let me give you a little history. Paul has got into a discussion with supposedly a body of believers. You mean church people argue? <laughs> Not us, amen. Brother Tom, they had a discussion going on about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is there... Some of you saying there's no resurrection of the dead. Verse 13. But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You're still in your sin. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ, they've just perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men the most pitiful. <clears throat> But now Christ is risen from the dead. Now, Paul got aggravated about this point. You ever get aggravated in an argument? You reach that point to find that somebody's pushed the right button? Is anybody like that? Now, come on, you spiritual folk. Somebody can sit at a red light a little too long, and it turns green, and you're impatient. So you sit on the horn. And you'll give them this and all that, and you're fixing to turn the next three. Come on. Paul's just about had enough of this argument, Brother Mark. He said, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 
asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Now Paul is in an argument with those that said that Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the dead. If Christ did not resurrect, then we would be in a pitiful condition. All of those that have died, they just perished and are no more. I heard one young boy said, then that would just make them worm dirt. But I'm here to tell you one thing. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the dead are already ascended into heaven. And at the right hand of God with Jesus Christ around the throne of God. If I did not believe that, I would be the most pitiful little creature in all of the world. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my dad is in heaven. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that J.H. Mitchell is in heaven. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mama Jewel is in heaven. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, Brother Woody, that your mama is in heaven. And that is our blessed hope. Why? Because Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Amen? You can give him a hand clap and pray. He's not nervous. As I walk around the cemetery, there are just empty shells. What we bury has to go back to the earth. Genesis chapter 3. God always has a standard and a law. And it has to be followed. He said, from the dust we were created and to the dust, Brother Gary, that we would return. And that's why we place the bodies back like we do, whether it be by cremation, whether it be by death in a cast, it makes no difference. I'm here to tell you, you're going to go back. But there's one thing that I know. I know that this book is true. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, begins to say that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to be with the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm here to tell you, I know about the resurrection. So I don't weep as much as anymore when I go by my dad's tombstone. I don't weep so much anymore when I go by my baby's little grave and a headstone there. Why? Because I know they're looking down from above. And that is my blessed hope that Jesus Christ, the cause of his resurrection, has made that possible. I'd like to be in there with Paul. I'm not a confrontational person. But when you get to that book, you're not backing me in the corner because you're not going to like it. Because I'm going to speak to you every scripture that I know. And when I spit the scripture at you, I hope God convicts you and the Lord makes you miserable that you go to backing up. Because you're not going to back me up from the faith that I have in Jesus Christ. Brother Tony Cotton, we were raised to believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I still preach, I still hold, because I know this blessed book is true. Therefore, I know that he is risen. Amen. Amen. How about some historical facts? Turn over to Matthew chapter 28. Let's look at verses 1 through 10. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. I told you last week what happened. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he knew that he was riding into something, Brother Les. He was riding into betrayal. He was riding into judgment. But he was riding into the crucifixion. You have that picture, sister? I, I messed her all up back there. Y'all got to bear with me. And this is the end result. That our Savior Jesus Christ rode into. All of that blood that you see spilling from that body. Was for you. He knew what awaited him. And in the earthly sense that he was. Brother Jim. He went ahead and rode all the way to the cross. <laughs> and when he cried it is finished. The earth began to shake. The 
sun refuse to shine? Why? Because the creator of heaven and earth had said it is finished and it began to revolt. Why? Because of the blood that was dripping from that cross. Go back now to the scripture. And there was a great earthquake. Wonder why? Because Brother Kirby it knew that the creator was coming forth. And for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Now stop it. Y'all notice who went to the tomb first? Now there's either one or two reasons. They're more faithful than men. Or they're real nosy. I'm going to go with the first one. Faithful. Said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Validating the crucifixion. He is not here. For he is risen. As he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold I have told you. So they went out quickly. I imagine from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. How about in the book of Mark? Let's look at the first 11 verses. We're going to validate this resurrection. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salomon brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early. Somebody say early. Early, early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. If you ever don't get with Jesus Christ, you're going to get on the right side. Amen? And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciple and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. Notice that the word had to be taken back to the disciples. How is it that the women has got to go tell the preachers? Hey, he's resurrected. Two things. Either their faith is really wandering, or they're the laziest bunch of jokers you've ever seen. I think I'll go with the first one. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Luke 
says in chapter 24. Now on the very first day of the week, very what? What? Early. Early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. Here again is the bunch of women coming. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And the words seemed like to them like idle tales. And they did not believe them. Mm. How about John? Chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb why do you think that this word is found in these writings? As a reminder that we need to seek him first and quickly and don't get ourselves into dilemma and disaster and let him be the last choice that we make. We need to seek him early in everything we do in life because if we seek him early, we will not get into dilemma and to disaster. We got too many people that Jesus Christ is the last resort of everything. Oh, and finally you remember, yeah, he is faithful. But I'm telling you, we need to seek him early in everything that we do. Make Jesus your first choice instead of your last. Amen? While it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb, then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. Finally, they got a preacher to answer. So they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. That would be like me and Jack. We have a sprint to the tomb. I hope the tomb is not very far. <laughs> Jay is going to outrun me to the tomb. But Jay doesn't have, I guess, the guts to go in. Finally, after two pit stops, three bottles of water, and an oxygen tank, I arrive. And when I arrive, I stumble right on in. I'm going to find out for myself. If I run, I won't prove. Now, I told you here the other day that I actually ran here the other day. Didn't stroke. Thought I was going to have a heart attack. But I ran. Sister Lofton was telling me there was a cow behind me. <laughs> and I mean, I, I sprinted then. Actually, I went to running then. And she was sitting in the truck laughing. <laughs> My, what a wonderful wife I have. She was laughing that the cow list was after me. And, and I was running, you know... When you get old, you got joints and hurt and all that. And I'm running and all that. And she said, she's gaining. Roy, I put it in gear then. I dropped that crippled leg out and I went to running then, buddy. Because I knew something was about to happen to me. You might outrun me, G. 
Jade, but I'm going to go in the tomb first and I'm going to see for myself what is going on there. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the lady clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. That was the young one. That's Jade. Hmm, I don't see anything. Then Simon Peter came, 35 minutes later, following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his face not lying with the linen clothes but folded together in a place by itself. Hebrew law or custom. If you're not through if you're not through, you put it over to the side. But if you're through, you crumble it and throw it down here. He said, this is just the beginning. I'm not through yet. I, I'm not through what I need to accomplish. I'm out of the grave, but it's not the end of the story. Because I am coming back. This is just me exiting up, but I've got news for you. I'm going to come back. And when I come back, I'm going to get every one of you to go with me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> then the other disciple, Jay, his name really wasn't Jay. <laughs> but I just love Jay. Amen. Who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw... And believe. Hmm. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping and she wept. She stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener. Said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Amen. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. All four accounts he tells us of a risen Savior. And Paul is referring back and saying, He is risen. Why, Matthew said that he did. And of Luke and Mark and John all pinned that he has risen from the dead. But I'm here to tell you today that I know that Jesus Christ is risen. Why? Because of the salvation that we have today. Amen. Somebody give him a hand clap of prayer. Back to Paul. Now Paul is not a real good looking guy. Doesn't resemble me at all. <laughs> He's short, overweight, bald headed. And isn't like this, Weston. <laughs> My grandson in law. But you don't make him upset. He used to be called Saul of Tarsus. He persecuted the church and put people to death for serving God. He thought he was doing his religious duty by killing people. These heretics. Paul is arguing this point. But previously, Brother Richard, he said this, beginning in verse 3. For I deliver to you first of all that which I received, 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That he was seen by Cephas, or Peter, by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. I'm going to get back to that in just a moment. After that, he was seen by James, by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also. It's by one born out of due time. For I am least of all the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Now, he is given his facts, Paul's account of a risen Savior. Notice he said he was seen by Peter by the twelve. Now, the disciples did not believe and they locked themselves away and Jesus came into them. And finally, with Thomas being present the second time, he told him this. He said, Thomas, reach hither thy finger and feel my hand. And he felt the nail piercing where it was. He said, Peter, or Thomas, thrust thy hand in the side where he got me with the spear. Then he fell down on his knees and said, My Lord and my God. He revealed himself to the apostles. Then he goes on and goes to telling us about this. Seen by over 500 brethren at one time. Now there's about 500 here this morning. Imagine if every one of us, Brother Jerry, had an eyewitness account of a resurrected Savior. Now they would ignore about 12 or 15 of us saying we're a bunch of coots. But it's hard to quieten 500. Every one of them telling the same story about a risen Savior. He goes on to say this. Who some have already passed, but most remain. I got to thinking about that. I can't help myself, Randy. Some of the thinking that I have. And I said, those that passed away must have got the validation they was looking for and said, I'll just go ahead and leave now. I know that he is alive forevermore and I'm going to be alive, so I'll just go ahead and go on to heaven with him. Amen. Now, you also got to understand that it said this, that those who had died before after Jesus Christ was crucified and he rose again, the dead were seen walking around the city. Don't you imagine someone scratching their head going, didn't we bury him about two months ago? What's up? Didn't we just attend his funeral last week? And here he is walking around, getting ready to go on up with the resurrected Savior. I want to tell you something. When you got that many people walking around and looking from the dead, getting ready to sit from heaven, I can validate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is risen. He's alive forevermore. Come play something, Sister Amy. Then Paul gives one more story of a lay person just like you in Acts chapter 7. His name is called Stephen. He's just a lay person, but he's a believer of Jesus Christ. Spirit filled, one of those that doesn't have reverend in front of his name. Just a follower. And he's preaching a message. And, and I want to show you what kind of preaching that he was doing. He said in verse 51 of Acts chapter 7. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised at heart. Wouldn't you like to get that every Sunday? He blasted it. He didn't hold back getting 
He just told him how it was. He said, in ears, you have all, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so will you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? He asked them a question. And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. Boy, he's preaching to them, isn't he? Who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. In other words, they got mad. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And said, look, I see the heavens open. And the Son of Man is standing at the right hand of God. That's a resurrected Savior is who that is. And they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran and hid with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. That's Paul the apostle standing watching someone being killed for the cause of Christ. But he says, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God and they killed him right there. Paul is there holding close and close. And I love how he goes on to say, but at last, I saw it. I'm on my way to Damascus and a light shines out of heaven and blinds me and I fall off my horse because I can't see past the radiant beauty and the glory of the one that's calling out. Saul, Saul, it's hard to kick against the prince. And he failed. And he was blinded. Jesus gave him a visitation for himself. And he said, I don't need Cephas to tell me. I don't need the 500 to do it. I saw him for myself. I want to tell you today that our Savior's risen. And Jesus Christ is soon to come back. Amen? He's soon to come back and be his church. This morning, in just a moment, if you would just bow your heads at this time. And if you do not know this Christ as your Savior, I invite you to make his acquaintance. His resurrection is truth. They said because sin entered and death entered because of the sin of a man, Adam. But through the works of one man, resurrection and life has come, Jesus Christ. So today I ask you, if you do not know this risen Savior, you can make him the Lord of your life. And while every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here, say, Pastor, I need to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. If you just raise your hand. No one looking around. God bless these. We're going to pray together while every head is bowed. Just pray a prayer like this. Dear Savior, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I believe that you were born to a virgin. But you were crucified but you rose from the dead and that you're soon coming back. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and be the Lord of my life. And I ask you to move into my heart and take charge and take residence. For I believe in you, Jesus Christ. And I call to you today to be my Savior because you have risen and you are my soon coming King. If you pray this in earnest, if you really believe in your heart, then Jesus Christ will come in and abide with you. Because his word said, as many as call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, make him the Lord and Savior of your life. For he is risen. Would you just join me and say, he is risen. He is risen. Happy Easter to each and every one of you today. May God bless you. Safe travels. We're having Easter next Sunday too, so come back. And uh, 
God bless you for being with us today. Be patient with the children's building as they get ready for an Easter egg hunt for your children. Amen.